Hi there friends, good to see you again. So in today's video, we are going to look at 5 things you don't want to miss when building a self-balancing robot. The self-balancing robot is not a very forgiving project. Most people won't even notice the problem with their robot until the project is finished and ready for testing. And for their surprise, it doesn't work. The robots refuse to maintain an upright pose and they don't even know what exactly the problem is. Is it the controller parameters? Is it some sort of a mechanical or electrical issue? They eventually panic as the deadline for submitting the project approaches and they will succumb to despair and submit the project anyhow or receive an SC at best. But don't worry, that won't happen to you this year because I'm gonna show you 5 things that you absolutely have to get right when building a self-balancing robot. When building a robot, you have to pay close attention to detail because everything that you overlook might be the reason for your project failure. When it comes to self-balancing robots, the first thing you have to consider is buying the right motors. Generally, there is two types of actuators considered for this project, which are the DC and the stepper motors. The DC motor is more efficient, with an efficiency between 75% and 80%, and that means it have low energy consumption and doesn't get hot fast when operating. In addition to this, DC motors have low price range and you can get one for less than $3. The stepper motors, in the other hand, are built for precision and they have excellent torque characteristics at low speeds, which are two key components of successful self-balancing robots. The current consumption of the stepper motor is independent of the load, and they constantly draw maximum current, which will quickly drain the power supply and cause both the motors and the driver circuit to build heat. As a personal choice, I always choose the DC motor because they are widely available and inexpensive, and in the same time energy efficient, which allow me to attain a reasonable long battery life. Also before you buy a motor, make sure you calculate the needed torque using this formula, and then factor it by 2 to be in the safe side. The result would be the minimum torque for the motors you wanna buy. Number 2 in our list is the weight distribution. When mounting your components on the robot, make sure to pay particular attention to the weight distribution between the left and the right sides. In order to create a weight balance, you have to aim in placing your components to the exact center of the chassis. But even then, you must consider that the components themselves might not be balanced. Let's say for example you are mounting this motor driver on your robot, if you don't consider the additional weight that heavier components like the heatsink adds to the left side, you might end up with a robot that have the tendency to lean to the left. Luckily, a simple change in the orientation of the board will have a positive impact on the weight distribution. You can clearly see that the heatsink now is centered in the chassis, restoring the weight balance. Another thing to look out for while building a self-balancing robot is the wiring nests. The more wires your project contains, the more potential breakpoints it has, and the longer it takes to troubleshoot. It's always a good practice to reduce the wiring in electronics projects by using a custom circuit board, which will contribute in reducing the complexity of your self-balancing robot, and in the case of malfunction, locating the problem will be easier. The EMU is the component responsible for the perception in the self-balancing robot. It measures the acceleration which can be used to calculate the inclination angle. However, before this can be accomplished, EMU must be properly calibrated. You must mount the module on the chassis of the robot and then place the chassis on a level surface. And only then you can run the calibration sketch in the Arduino board, but be careful not to disturb the chassis nor the surface on which it is placed, since this can produce incorrect calibration values which will reflect negatively on the robot's performance. Also, make sure that the EMU is tightly attached to the chassis because when things start shaking during the demonstration of the robot, and believe me it will, any small movement in the EMU will produce a catastrophic result. The last thing on our list, but might be the most important one yet, is synchronizing the motors. Because due to small manufacturing imperfections, identical motors might have slightly different velocities. One of the possible reasons for this may be that the wire that makes up the windings might have slightly different diameters, and therefore different impedance. This can also be equally caused by the magnets, or the brushes, or all of the above. 
This is why you should always test both of your motors side to side and if one of them is a little bit slower then you might want to consider multiplying its inputs inside the Arduino sketch by a greater than one factor so that the two motors can have the same RPM when the same voltage is applied. Another solution can be by creating another closed loop control system for synchronizing the motors where the velocity of one of them is measured and used as a feedback to regulate the velocity of the other one. If you are building a self-balancing robot and you are facing a problem, please post your issue in the comments section down below, we'll find the solution together.